Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to my channel. Y'all might think that this hat is because this video is gonna be about a farmer's market, but really, the weather here has been so humid that my hair just looks awful, and so I'm just trying to mask it somehow. <laughs> okay, so in last week's video, I kind of let the cat out of the bag that I am going to be participating in our small town farmer's market, which is very daunting for me. I've never done anything like this before. To be honest with you, I'm a little bit scared about stepping into something new but that doesn't mean that I'm not willing to put myself out there and try something even if I fail at it it's gonna be okay the motivation behind participating ourselves in the farmers market was that I have been cleaning out the house you know I've been trying to purge and simplify our home but we're actually to the point where our home is outfitted with so many vintage and antique pieces that I'm not just getting rid of like dollar store items and target finds or random necessities and knickknacks I'm actually getting to the point where I'm needing to offload some of my like vintage and antique items and you guys I really struggle with this because of the whole Goodwill outlet thing and knowing just how much of your donated items go to the landfill, it just breaks my heart to think about some of our beautiful items going to a landfill, even if we don't need them anymore. I had enough for like a small garage sale, but I actually do a garage sale with a friend in the fall and my antique items did not do nearly as well as like our kids clothes and stuff in a garage sale. I've talked about it in the past that I said I'd like to have like a little antique shop like pop up or something. Well, the farmer's market is actually like the perfect opportunity to do that. It's not like I'm trying to rent a space and try to make my own antique store or even have a spot in an antique store. It seems like a good way to be able to offload some of our vintage and antique items and also connect with people in our community. And so we signed up for it. I don't know if I necessarily have the time for this right now, but we're gonna give it a shot. <laughs> because of the amount of items that I had to sell, I just didn't feel like it was gonna be enough to have a substantial farmer's market booth. And so I decided to hit up the Goodwill bins and a couple garage sales and see if I can kind of fill it out a little bit better. So this is a totally new experience for me, going to the thrift store with the purpose of reselling some of the items that I was going to find. It's weird though, it's it's just not how my mind works. I'm always looking for like, what do I need? And so there's a few items here where I was like, I can't believe I bought these, I don't actually need them, but I think that they're gonna be a great contribution to the items that I am letting go out of our homes. And I cannot wait to meet and see if there's other people in the area that have the same kind of passion for vintage and antiques that I do. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring y'all along with me to the stores. I'll show you some footage of what I found and then we'll get started on going through this farmer's market haul. Okay, so starting out this piece, you guys, should I have got it or left it? I feel like it's really good for that like whole primitive look I'm going for, but I wasn't sure about like the swirls on it. Somebody let me know if that would have been appropriate. I did see the sled here. These are really good for resale, but it is $19.99. And I would guess I probably wouldn't get that much more for the sled. I think I've heard that you're not supposed to buy something unless you can get three times the amount of money in resale. So I don't know, somebody let me know if I'm wrong on that. And clearly this is the first time I'm doing this so I'm not like the most knowledgeable. Thought that this rack was really cool. Do you guys know what this is for? I thought it might be for spoons. It was $4 and I didn't get it just because I wasn't sure about what it was. I did however have this in my cart for the longest time but at the end I did put it back because it was $4 and I'm looking for more of like a black metal than a dark wood for our home. There were a couple of really cute rocking chairs. However, I did not take these home. They were, I think the other one was four and this one was six. This is like a Jenny Lind one even, and I thought it was so beautiful, but I already have a lot of kind of large pieces and I'm not looking to take up even more room in our house. So I did leave it behind. I thought that this picture of this horse was so sweet and actually it probably would have been perfect, but y'all, I can't just get everything I see, even though there were so many good things. I thought that this basket was cute, but I'm not a huge fan of the stars and there's something about it that doesn't quite look right. I did love this vintage quilt star. I think it was $5, right? But I don't know, I just couldn't bring myself to actually pick it up and bring it home. Y 
y'all, there was this massive fur shawl and I even picked it up and had it in my cart for a little bit just because it was so unique and it was real fur, but I did wind up putting it back just because it had some holes in it and I didn't know if it would actually resell. And there was this pile of a ton of vintage linens. It looked like somebody had donated these from a garage sale. And so I picked up as many as I could, but I didn't get it all on film. I love these hand embroidered pieces, but this one didn't really go with my style. And I really was looking to sell pieces that actually are my style, not my style adjacent, if you know what I mean. I probably should have picked up these Crocs though too, since they were only $2.98, but oh um. Y'all, I told you that the farmer's market is actually one of a few things that I have kind of in the works right now. Honestly, I'm just trying to steward well this channel and every opportunity that comes along with it. But along with the farmer's market, I'm really interested in learning new skills as to like even how to handle like social media and how to handle being a YouTuber. I've just realized that there's so much that I do not know. So I was really excited when Skillshare reached out and wanted to partner with me today. Things are changing so much in this world right now and there's so much opportunity to transition out of a nine to five by learning new skills. You might know Skillshare for its classes on photography and film and video editing but they actually have hundreds of career focused classes as well. Traditional work and jobs are not one size fit all so here you can learn to design a career that fits you. I had no idea that doing a YouTube channel could actually be something that could support my family and I wish I would have had these classes while starting out. There's also stuff on like lifestyle, productivity, marketing, all all that kind of stuff. A lot of stuff that's really valuable to know if you want to be successful in any type of like freelance or creative environment. I myself am really interested in like freelance and entrepreneurship and also video making because I do all of my filming and editing. Everything that you see here on YouTube is done by me. So right now I'm actually taking a class on productivity for creators. It has information like on systems, workflow, organization, how to like be more productive, all of that stuff because juggling this YouTube channel and my family, it's a huge responsibility. Actually, after taking these classes, I am planning on starting a Pinterest. <laughs> I know that I'm like so far behind on that, but I have one that I've had since like 2011, but I've actually never uploaded a single photo to Pinterest. And I think that that would help really get the word out about my channel. And so I'm really excited to start that. Anyway, there is no goal that is too small here. Sometimes thinking about your future can be really intimidating. Skillshare takes off the pressure by starting small and their teachers will take you step by step. So I'm going to put my link below and the first thousand people to use this link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Okay. So are you guys ready to see what I found? <laughs> Let's get started. Okay. So I'm actually going to start with a couple bigger pieces that I found at a garage sale. So at this garage sale, there was all kinds of like vintage and antique pieces, but part of it was this little uh, ironing board. <laughs> I've honestly always wanted something like this, but you guys, I don't know. I bought it not necessarily intentionally thinking about putting it in my booth at the farmer's market. Oh gosh, I was wondering why it wasn't working. It was because I was like holding it the wrong direction. There we go. Okay, that looks much better. I would like to use it, but I don't know. Unfortunately, our laundry room is in our basement and it's like terrifying down there. I just don't even know if it's salvageable down there. It is in such scary shape. I bought this thinking like, oh man, maybe I can just kind of make it cute down there or something. I don't know. Anyway, I got this for $2 and I thought I might try to make it cute down there, but it may just be better in somebody else's laundry room that actually has a cute laundry room, not a terrifying one. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that go. Another thing that I found that I was really excited to use for myself, but I'll tell you in a minute why I'm not gonna wind up using this, is this cute little high 
chair and look at this. What kind of video is this that I like? I'm trying to figure out how to show y'all in a way that you can really take a good look at it on screen. Okay, so this is really cute. There is a little bar missing right here, but I am so bummed because I actually found this. I found it for $5 and I found it after looking for a high chair for so long. We had always had that like little plastic Ikea one through all of our kids and I've never found one that I felt like was appropriate with our home. Well, right before I found this little guy, I found a beautiful high chair in Lincoln, Nebraska, and I organized to get it up to Omaha and I wound up buying it. And so I bought them both right around the same time. The other one was $25. This one was $5. And I brought them both into the house to decide which one I liked best. And even though this one is so beautiful and primitive, I just decided that the other one was a little bit more appropriate with our home. And so I am going to be letting this one go. So I bought this one for five bucks. So I don't know. Let me you know like what do you guys think would be a reasonable amount to ask for it honestly all the ones that were on marketplace were at least $50 it, it took me a couple years to find the one that we found and the fact that it was $25 was crazy so next I did find this little uh what is this called like a tobacco basket right I know that a lot of people use these on walls. We don't have a whole lot of wall space in order to use something like this. I mean, maybe I could put it like behind something, but I know that these are really popular right now in home decor. And so I figured, I think I bought it for $1.99 at the Goodwill. So maybe I could sell it for like five bucks or something like that. Here's the thing, people. Josh and I had talked about it and we're not necessarily going to use the farmer's market to like make a lot of money because I really don't think that the money that we're gonna make is gonna be worth all of the work that goes into it. But it's more about like the ethics of it and the fact that I want these vintage and antique pieces to go to people who are really going to appreciate them. And it's also just an excellent way to meet people in our community. So really it's more about the heart behind it than actually making money for us. I did find this little tin. I found this at the Goodwill outlet and it's already got a little piece of twine on it. Again, I feel like you could use this. Honestly, maybe we should keep it. It's from Kellogg's. It says Kellogg's All Brand, best as cereal and best for cooking. You guys can see that on there. So it looks like somebody has used this as decor in the past. And honestly, I thought it was kind of cool. Ours right now has like a nonstick on it. So maybe I should just keep this. No, I, I should sell it. I should sell it. <laughs> so while I was at the outlet, I did find this little book. It's clearly from, I think the 70s, right? Is this, this typeface that was used all the time. But it's called Adapting American Antiques. Look at that cute little illustration on the front. You know what? I could just look at the date on this. 1971. <laughs> Basically, it's a whole book from the 70s on how to use antiques as other things. Honestly, I could probably use this for myself, but you guys know that I'm not a huge fan of red books, so I'm gonna go ahead and let this go to somebody else. Next, I found this cute little vintage, I don't know what you call this. I just wanted to call it a baby blanket, I guess, because it's somewhat small. The only thing about it is that you guys, I love it on this side, but the other side has like a floral pattern. Then this just isn't quite my style. This is probably a little bit more like what 60s. And although I really love this size, we already have some baby blankets and we just don't have a need for another one. So I'm going to go ahead and let this cute little quilt go. And on the quilt theme, I actually found another quilt. So I know that we have another one of these upstairs that I found one um, earlier this year. And remind me what these are called. Is it wedding, like wedding ring quilts or something like that? I don't think that it's actually an antique just by the look of the actual fabric and some of the stitching. I think that this is made with a machine. However, I thought it was really cute. My thought is that if nobody buys this at this antique store, maybe I can use it on our bed at Christmas time or something like that. Would that be cute? Y'all, it's so big. I can like hardly even hold it up to show you. We've actually been using it a little bit. <laughs> Josh has been using it on the couch. Honestly, I saw this at the Goodwill outlet and I just couldn't leave it there. It was just, it seemed too good to just go to the landfill. So in true Kristen fashion, I made a mistake. I did find this cool little, I don't even know what you call these, like racks. It's like made of solid wood. It's super sturdy. But after I 
bought it and brought it home, I noticed that there is one missing. So, I mean, I may put it out. If somebody wants to buy it, they can, but I'm not gonna blame anybody for not. <laughs> for not getting this, but I was so bummed because I was like, wow, this is really great. Why would this even be in here? And now I see why. I did find a couple of utensils. This guy is like super thick and I don't know what kind of wood this would be if it's like walnut, but it's pretty heavy. And then I did find this, it's a Cuisinart wooden spoon. And so I, I have some Crocs that I'm gonna be selling that used to be used throughout our home. And I just thought it'd be cute to stick some of these kitchen utensils. I also got this little, what is this? It's like just a strainer what like what would you strain that would be this small anyway I thought it'd be cute just to put some of these like vintage kitchen tools into one of the crocs that I'm going to be selling and so I don't honestly I'll probably just sell them for like a dollar a piece I don't like I said I don't have like all these aspirations of making a ton of money I just want to have a cute little shop and have it open for a little bit and just see if I can get rid of some of these items that are starting to clutter up our home to make room for some new antique pieces that can clutter up our home. I did find this cute little car. Obviously it was at the Goodwill outlet and so it didn't cost very much, but I figured stuff like this is kind of trendy right now for especially like new moms with little babies. So I thought that that would probably sell. I did find this rug here and you guys, and I did buy this to sell, but part of me is almost thinking about just keeping it and putting it in our side porch. We have a mat that's about this size found that out there right now. And it is like, it has gotten destroyed this year with all of our muddy boots and everything. And so it may just be time to retire that one and bring this guy in. Or maybe I'll sell it at the farmer's market. I don't know. <laughs> so at the Goodwill outlet, I did find this little basket. I'm probably going to wind up taking off these, gosh, what are these? Bunnies? But I figured that if you got rid of those, it's a pretty cute little basket. It seems like a good quality basket. I like the shape and everything of it. And then in here, I put a bunch of linens that I found. So there's just some hankies. And y'all, is it lame that like I kind of want to try? <laughs> dry a hanky. I don't know. I may even like wind up keeping a couple of these. That sounds crazy. I actually have like, like a condition where my nose is just running all day, every day. I've had it for as long as I can remember. And sometimes the amount of Kleenex that I use on a regular basis, it's like, insane and so part of me has even wondered like should I start to try to be sustainable and use hankies and I'm like yeah but then there's another part of me that's like oh my gosh what if people found out that I used hankies <laughs> would they just think that I was like the grossest person in the world anyway I found all of these like little vintage linens in the Goodwill outlet and honestly I haven't even opened up a lot of them but I just thought that they were cute kind of like pretty little gosh what is this like a tablecloth I guess another hanky and these look like they were at a garage sale because they're all listed with this says all for five dollars it looks like somebody was trying to sell these at a garage sale and they didn't sell and so they just put them all in the goodwill which of course goodwill doesn't care about anything and so they're just like sure send it to the outlet i found this a uh, little oven mitt which is kind of this kind of seems like a little bit mid-century maybe like 70s or so which i thought was kind of cute i'm not always into that type of stuff but i liked that one found this pretty pillowcase it actually looks like the ones that we had upstairs in Ruby's room and even though we have pillowcases for all of our pillows it's nice to have just a few extras looks like here's another little hanky with the letter M in it and then I don't quite know what this is but let's check it out a lot of this is like that antique cotton actually oh these are okay this is this is two pillowcases oh, unfortunately these do have a couple like little stains and stuff I have this like lofty goal of someday creating a vintage looking quilt out of actual vintage white cotton sheets or something like that with three kids and a YouTube channel. It's hard to find the time to do any of that stuff right now. <laughs> anyway, everybody, well, this is just kind of what I have found so far to put in my little farmer's market booth. If you guys know me and if you're in the area, I would love if y'all stop by. I am so excited for this little farmer's market and just trying something new. Y'all, if it does great awesome if it totally bombs then you know at least we gave it a shot and <laughs> i'll know to just stick to my strengths which is youtube <laughs>
Anyway, everybody, well, thank you so much for joining me on today's thrift haul, farmer's market haul, and y'all, I just love being able to spend time with you each week. You guys have been in such a blessing in my life. If you like this kind of content, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up or subscribe. And if you're interested in following along in our daily life, you can find me over on Instagram at Kristen K. Hoff. Anyway, everybody, we will see you next time. Bye.